All right. He told me, like, uh, I'm going to ruin your career and I'm going to break your legs. We'll uh, get into that a little bit later in the video. Hey, are you ready for some rollerblading news? Yes, it's Thursday. Day. Let's go. Who's been winding up Bill Stoppard so much that he's gone to these lamps? He's gone mad like. Foot stomp. Combat skating. Inside foot stomp. Whoa, stay on, Bill, man. I promise never to use that on a skateboarder. What gym has allowed him to do that? Did he have to like sneak his skates in and put them on really slyly before he started tearing into the heavy bag? I, I'd be clotheslined if I tried going into pure gym with my rollerblades on. What's going to be next? A little bit of tie bow on quad skates or something like that. One, two, three, four. It's going to be ringing up Dana White trying to line up a fight with Paddy the Baddy. Paddy the Baddy versus Bill Stompard. Inside foot stomp. You might find yourself in less altercations with people if you stop darting around in the road in front of cars and in front of pedestrians and that. The weekend just gone was the seventh Boshy Pipe skate off and it looked like an absolute belter man. It was a clean sweep on the podium for them skates. If we had like a constructors championships like they do in the F1. I reckon them skates would be doing pretty good. I mean, obviously this one would have been an absolute result, like, but it'd be good if we like, you know, tracked kind of a list of like official competitions to see like which brand was doing the best, eh? Anthony Marchione came third, Sean Dars took second. What an absolute lunatic, like launching himself to that tiny little curb. And people might think like, oh yeah, it's just a little curb, but like, there's no time for adjustment. If that goes wrong, you're bouncing off them steps. And he proper flung himself at it as well. And Sean Kelso took the win. That last trick was fat, man. Do people say that anymore? Fat. I think we should bring that one back. That was a fatty. Respect to anybody who skated that rail in the finals, or has ever skated that rail in the finals, because there's always like a human net, human flesh wall at the end. That is really intimidating. Doing the tricks alone is like, I guess, pretty rowdy with a crowd being there. But then when you've got that like wall of people at the end, <laughs> people are treating themselves like they're pins in a bowling alley. If you like standing at the end and being like, oh, I like bowl something, I'm ready for it. And then the skate is the actual bowling ball. Mate, I get conscious like if I think a few people are looking at me when I'm walking and I start to like walk off and I'm like, overthink it and I'm like, oh my God, I've actually forgotten how to walk here. Can't imagine doing a trick. Cheers to all those people who bought the Spotted Dog abstract tea, thinking about doing another colorway if you're into it, and there's only two left of the black version of the original tea. Wasn't just a skating as well, there was loads of tray stalls as well. Did you see the Bodega Boys' store? Damn, son, where'd you find this? They had like their merch there, they had fruit, there was like chewing gum, drinks, all sorts of stuff. It actually looked more stocked up than my local test Express, which looks like it's been ransacked. Recently, they only had like a lonely Oxo cube and some fizzy peach flavored water available. Oh yeah, and they never run out of wet packet ham. The Bodega Boys also have their new flick, the sequel to Enter the Bodega, Cash Only. It is superb. It is the San Pellegrino lemon and mint. Oh, like proper fresh, like fizzy bubbly, just like absolutely top quality, luxurious, corner store offering that's what we're calling like bodegas over here in it corner stores it's quality it's authentic you feel fully emerged in their world the skating is fluid and creative making full use of their environment which they all seem to be like fully adapted to i mean even beyond the tricks you could get a full stoke on over the variety of spots are so interesting the editing and the soundtrack are excellent it's probably one of my favorite edits of the year so far and there is this absolutely gold moment it's not about the subscribers it's about how they feel when they do it. Yeah. We also got to see Don Bruce's pro model Mesmer skate. There's some pictures from the comp and in the lead up because all the Mesmer lot were there a bit beforehand. I assume it's Dom's skate. I don't think there's been like any kind of official announcement yet, but I also don't think it's really a surprise or much of a leak and I think like everybody knows what the score is here. It's pretty much the same colorway as his unreleased Razor's skate. He is the Frog King. There's a fly on the back of the thing which I also assume is like, accompanied by a frog. The wheels have got his name on him. It's got a new design on the sole plate as well. Some clowns with like some things bouncing out of their heads. I believe it says trust your instincts. I thought it was actually going to be officially announced at the BPSO and like in line with Dom's birthday. Oh happy birthday Dom by the way. And I guess 
I guess it kind of was because they've not been <laughs> they've not been shy about showing the skates and that they've all been skating them. They were on a table at the event. Really looking forward to the official announcement, like any edits that go with it, or just any footage that's coming out of this like NY trip as well, because it looks like I'm pretty sure all the Mesmer skaters were there. Really like how much uh, and how frequently they're getting together as a team. It's like uh, it's exciting. Sticking with Mesmer, Martin Danning got a pro wheel from Orange Wheel Company. 59 millimeter, 92 way, got a couple of hands on there lighting up these candles that spell his name. Would have been really sick if they released like a special edition pack that actually came with candles spelling his surname. Imagine that. Market them as candles, market them as wax. They could have gone down like a really creepy path and gone like a bit spooky with it. Release the candles with a Ouija board, like rig it so it spells like Danning or Orange Wheel Company, mate. Please, if you can hear me, can you please copy this? There's a bonkers edit to go with the thing as well. He's got the banging 540s, the fakey sevens, plenty of wall rides, and this mad fakey 450 wall bonk move. Man, nuts. I'm pretty sure I've never seen that before. I'm actually thinking about filling out the MBD form for that one, Mike. There you go, Susan, another one, bank that. Just quickly, is this MBD? That is actually bonkers, man. Violet. Martin was also up on the Platform podcast. Talks about the wheel, obviously. Bears a Torden tour. Getting on Mesmer. Mesmer tour. Skating with Sizemore as idol. He's respect for Billy. And then they also go over the Rosie situation. It's been brought up before in the Wax Toaster interview. Suggest you go and watch that one. And like kind of understandably, Martin doesn't go into like great depth on it again because like, it's a bit traumatic and it's like a horrendous situation. Respect to Dave McNamara though for highlighting the fact that like Martin was 17 at the time, like essentially a child, and the person he was dealing with was an adult, like mid to late 20s. There is no way they should have been treating him the way they did. That was like completely unacceptable. I also respect that like Martin, when like talking back about it, like, is quite level-headed about the whole thing. So massive like, shout out to him and respect. His Mesmer teammate Levy was up on the Jump Shoot podcast, obviously covering Plastic Pushers too, that coffin slide, getting on Mesmer, and then not so obviously covering what his old Adapt manager allegedly said to him when he told him he was gonna quit. Like he went so mad on me, he was, that was like, it's a really crazy story. So he was like, mad at you? Yeah. He told me, like, uh, I'm gonna ruin your career and I'm gonna break your legs if you like start skating for another brand. What? And, yeah, like, he said, I'm gonna beat you up and stuff like that. Uh, sorry, what? I think, like, Austin's reactions, like, probably captured a lot of people's reaction to this situation. What? That is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready for that one. Jeez. Yeah, like, a lot, a totally mad, like, and also, he then asked for like all of the stuff back, like clothes or whatever, and the skates, which are handmade and like tailored to the person. So, what are you, you going to do with them skates, like? I put everything like in a big, like a uh, plastic bag, and just put it in front of his house and like rang the door and like left. It blows my mind. Again, a teenager being treated appallingly by an adult who's meant to be like looking after them it should almost be like a guardian like in this kind of situation like all of them is so small like so niche like what 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 are you what are you thinking <laughs> like treating these people like this is awful allegedly the other weekend was a big one for the uk scene things kicked off on the friday with the premiere of simon isle's satin juice which was jam-packed full of people really sick like visual tour de force and also City Life Steve Collis special brand. Mate, Steve Collis is an absolute like secret agent, sleeper agent, mate. They just wake him up every now and then and he just goes to work. He is on the charge in this video. It's absolutely incredible. Just outrageous skating, mate. You got a little sneaky appearance in there from Bonard as well. And the rest of the City Life boys. Honestly, the skating is phenomenal. Shout out to everyone involved and Joe Harvey for putting it on at his studio. Man. Absolutely brilliant event, man. There's decorations, little bit of tinsel off the projector, held in the hottest room on the absolute planet. Hotter than the sun! Everybody's faces had gone red from the heat, man. 
the windows are open, just can't even get any air in there. Also, I think I like probably missed half of it because all the tall people standing in front of me, like trying to get a little bit of an angle, and all of a sudden somebody sticks their head in front of me. But they're all on YouTube now, so go and check them out. Then on Saturday, this is starting to sound a little bit like that Craig David song. Then on Saturday was the Capital Rollers Jam. What a kickoff! Sam Crofts took third place, honestly, like, so funny seeing him, like, hoon it around that park for those tricks, and, like, when he landed him, like, the G-force on his face, like, amazing, there was this bit, and hopefully I can find this clip where he did, like, a launch, like, Disaster 540 over this thing, and he was over the moon, man, he was absolutely delighted. Bobby Spazoff took second. Put your hands on, put your hands on. Got, a, got a claim here for a signature trick, there's footage as well, like, um... What's the process if they don't actually land it? Void. This is how it's done in Rex Skates as well. And CJ Wellsmore took the win. There was also cash and prizes for the under 16s, the amateurs and the women. There was also the Legend Award and it's more than deserving winner Paul O'Toole, who absolutely ripped up the comp. Like, there was a bit like where CJ, I think it was on purpose, like, smashed into him, gave him a massive dead leg. He was trying to take him out of the final. Paul was ripping it, man. There's so much good stuff. He was, like, firing all over the place, like, disaster fishies. He was doing some mad stalls on the extension box, man. Properly enjoyed his skating. Really good to see him back in the scene, looking well and tearing it up. It was such a good day, atmosphere was incredible and it was great skating throughout the day, not just like the finals and not just like those winners and stuff like that, like Tom Barrio was absolutely ripping it, Sizemore, Julio had a few tricks in there, Umberto, Stan, bursting with the crowd please, a true top soul, oh my goodness, it's really good stuff, Ridder had a few tricks in there as well, bit of a like flash of Cody Lampman about the place, right, the atmosphere was incredible, I was left absolutely buzzing, like really big shout out to Blake Bird and Jamie Harris for like organising the thing, it looks like there's definitely going to be like uh, one next year, like honestly, totally motivated and just like keen to skate and keen to get to like more competitions. I was straight onto the sky scanner for flights to anywhere like where's there another competition let's go man. Oh and shout out to Mikey Marsh for taking a skate straight to the jet. He took the hit, disappeared for a bit but then he was back with a bandage on his head. And then on Sunday Leon had his premiere for Undertones that was filmed and edited by Scott Blackmore. Leon skating obviously they showed shine as well. <sighs> Well, what a weekend. By the end of it all, I was absolutely goose, man. Felt like I'd been <laughs> sleeping in a washing machine while scrapping Mark Tyson or something. I was done in. While the them lot were in town, they were also filming for the Clark's collaboration. I cannot wait to see what comes from this. This is like full scale, proper budget. This is exciting, man. The only thing that can compete with this is if Jug Line has come back and do a collaboration with Kickers or something, mate. That'd be a mad one. If Lord just goes bananas and like reaches out to Pod or something, 50 50 Pod shoes. Or if like Soap Shoes, Epic Grind Shoes did a collaboration with actual soap, like Imperial Leather, like have a little snatch box in the tongue for some soap and stuff. Them Skates and Mike McCullen have teamed up for some new soft goods. These are really sick, man. I'm into all of these. You've got the Dimensional Team, the Intersection Team. You've got the Memphis tea, skate shop tea. They all kind of have like this like 80s, 90s like production company kind of vibes to them. Like it reminds me of, um, do you remember that Scotch VHS tape advert with the skeleton and like just their brand and stuff? It kind of reminds me of that a little bit. I'm really into it. They've also thrown their hat into the sock game. They've jumped right in there, a few different pairs in there. One of them kind of reminds me of like Cheetos. Is that the influence for that one or is it Reese's Pieces? Kind of that kind of colourway. I'm into it, man. There's enough socks now in rollerblading that you could probably do like comparative reviews and that. Like people reviewing skates is it's a little bit boring. <laughs> I never watch them, but if somebody did a sock review, I'd be pretty keen to see how that went actually. Shuriken have also got socks, and so have Pom. Should I actually just buy a load of socks and do a review? Do things like, you know, that first day feel. Oh, first day feel on socks is absolutely heavenly. But then you like compare that to second day feel. <laughs> Maybe the feel after a week, how, how good they are as like uh, hand puppets and stuff like that. Which ones smell the least? Which ones work best in what liners? Like, can you size down your sock? Can you size down your skate? 
if you go for a certain sock and line of combo. Which sock would be best used? Like if you've got a bit of Morris dancing on the weekend or something? I've seen a few people when they don't have phone covers or phone protection thing, they put their phone in the sock. Which sock offers the most protection for your mobile phone? Sam Crofts dropped Tune In, the promo for his new pro model skate. Filmed and edited by John Lee. Additional filming from Joe Spray, Luke Thompson and James Bauer. It's utterly bonkers. Loads of boisterous tricks and John Lee's editing and pacing is incredible. You really get to like absorb all the tricks. So like the magnitude is given time to breathe. It doesn't fall into that trap of being like a hit and run edit where it's just like bang, there's a hammer, bang, there's another big trick, bang, bang, there's some more tricks. Like you're given some time to enjoy it. Like John Lee has this amazing ability to like capture the atmosphere and like present skating in a way that feels authentic. You know, sometimes an edit can feel like, I don't know, PowerPoint presentation at school or something. It's a bit like void of like the reality. Somehow John just like captures it, gets it all in there, can present it like in a different way. So the thing's like nine minutes long, but such an easy watch, really nice flow to it. And like such an amazing balance of the music, the hammer, but then the pacing as well feels totally like the opposite way to like how those kind of tricks are normally presented and i think it's incredible you get those like great interactions between the skaters and those like gems of like public interaction me and prince charles and coach in the middle. plus sam caps it off by adding like another one to ridiculous tricks at st paul's is this the best one USC have got a fair few stuntmen on the roster. Jay Yoon's new park edit, oh my goodness, absolutely sensational. Man, of thing about this kid is, well one, he's a kid. Two, just like there's never any sketch, is there? Like everything he does looks really, really good. And it's insane, man. Like the grinds as well, not just flips, like the grinds when he does that full cab true sole and then full cab again, like to the true top sole. Oh my goodness me, like. Imagine what Winter Clash is going to be like this year, like USD, definitely fly him over and uh, what's the other man's name? Danilo. Them two, imagine that. The, <laughs> the season pros coming in, these kids are just flying over your head to grind and everything. Oh man, it's going to be wild. The new Everything Company have got a really interesting frame out. I believe originally they were just going to build like, the wall for the 50-50 uh, prime frame, but they were like, nah, let's just build the whole flipping frame. It looks good, man. And in their words, it's designed to be playing full, V-shaped groove, keep you locked in the rails, fast sliding, low friction, glass filled nylon material, 60 millimeter max wheel size. And also a nice little touch with the frame box. I actually spell out the new everything company. I really like those kind of details. Kind of clever as well, because where are you getting replacement bolts from? You can only get them from them. Smart, mate. Might annoy a few people, but also I do think they look cool and it's definitely worth doing, isn't it? China Wilder has also got a signature graphic frame from Create Originals. Really nice detail on it, man, and well deserving. Plus, it's made in the US of A. Robbie Pitts has also got some new merch. You've got this vibrant tie-dye t-shirt. And bandanas as well, man. That's another thing you don't see very often in the rollerblading, bandanas. What I really love about it, it's authentic, super authentic Robbie, isn't it? Like, I'd actually love to see him, like, do a line. Like, having, like, a little boutique, man. Have some waistcoats in there, the bandanas, obviously, the belts. Or maybe you'd just be there, like, customising your skates for you. Imagine that. You can go along, almost like a, like a pick and mix, right? But you pick things and you're just like, oh, I'd like a bit of that on my skate, a little bit of that. Robbie just puts it together for you, mate. You can have that idea if you want. Another idea, sell the t-shirts white with the design on and then do, like, the tie-dye there and then. Like, well, either you can do it with Robbie or you can get Robbie to do it for you because he's probably, like, probably pretty, uh, pretty skilled at it. Oh, mate, that'd be amazing. Imagine that at events. So the other day, this picture popped up again. It was originally posted on Rashar Johnson's Instagram seven years ago. It's obviously, like, older than that. But is this the best team ever? Like, Gillen, Feinberg, Latimer, Sagone, Spies, Julia, Johnson, Zamora, and Petty. They've got a lot going for them. At the time, they were at the top and incredible. And they've got all this history behind them as well. Like, oh, my goodness. I... I can't, I don't know who to com even compare them to really. I guess it's a bit unfair, you know, comparing like different generations and stuff, but it's a pretty good claim, right? And look at the state of Lama's hair, man. Look at Spicer as well, Lee through a panic at the disco. If you think there's a better team, name them. Aragon must be fairly motivated to skate at the moment because he's broken his hand. 
but he's still out there doing tricks. I mean, we've gone from like, you know, not really any footage. He's probably skating in his spare time, like little bit of footage. Now he's still <laughs> going out there skating, even with a broken hand. Nice one to all my Patreons. Cheers for supporting me and helping me to keep this thing going. Here's another video you can get stuck into. Until next time, I'll uh, see you again soon. Spotty dog. <laughs>